Ladies and gentlemen, welcome down to the unveiling of the best premium golf ball in golf award. Now this video has literally, quite literally, taken over a year to film. Early in 2023, I reached out to all the major golf ball manufacturers and asked them to send through a selection of their premium golf ball. And across the year, I played multiple rounds with multiple golf balls at multiple locations in multiple countries. And the reason I did that was to try and bring you the most complete test that I've ever done. Alongside that, I have been data testing these balls across the year, and today we will finally finish up with the best ball in golf and what will be going in my bag. A reminder that everything tested within today's video is a premium golf ball, so that sits at the top of the offering of each of these manufacturers. If you do want other videos which are looking at the less premium selections, please get down into those comments below and let me know. So let's get into it. First of all, we are looking for the ball with the best visual tech. So companies are always looking at the best ways to improve their golf balls. Better. Better. And the way that they look is suddenly becoming quite a huge part of this. There are a number of different manufacturers trying to enhance the performance with the visual technology that they are putting on their golf ball. And out of everything that I've seen so far this year, by far my favorite is the Shrixen Z-Star Divide. So back in the day, Ping brought a golf ball out, which was similar to this. It was split in half with two distinct colors. But Shrixen are the first company to really bring this back in the modern age. And I think they've done an amazing job. There are other notable mentions within this category. You have Callaway with their triple track. You have TaylorMade with their Pix ball, for example. But this one for me is just so simple and so effective. And what I really love about it is that they've had the courage to stick it on a premium golf ball. Good job. Lining up putts with this ball is just so simple. And the feedback that it gives you pretty much instantly if you've hit a good or a bad putt is very apparent. Also, when you hit chip shots and short pitch shots with this ball, the visual effect is nice. Now, throughout this test, you will see that I think there are probably better performing golf balls overall than the Z-Star. But if you are looking for something with the best visual tech, uh, I think it's this. Now onto the golf ball, which is best for spin. So if you're looking for a softer golf ball that spins like crazy, you're in the right spot. Welcome to the party the TaylorMade TP5. Funny one this with the TP5 because when you're out on the golf course and when this is struck, it feels heavy, it feels solid, but in a very satisfying way. But also it flies exceptionally well. I do think this is gonna be a contender for the best golf ball overall. Higher spinning balls are starting to gain a little bit more popularity within the golfing marketplace, just because the golf clubs are designed now to be lower spinning, higher launching. So a ball which adds a little bit of spin and a little bit more control are becoming a bit more popular. Also, if you have a slower swing speed and you do want to use a more premium golf ball, generally these just stay in the air longer. So I've been testing these golf balls out on the GC Quad in the studio throughout the year as well. And the TP5, one of the reasons why I've selected it for the best spinning golf ball is that on shorter shots, it seems to have a little bit more of an advantage. When you start to get onto about 75 yards, quite a few of these golf balls, including the TP5, spin pretty much the same. But over those short distance shots, I just found the TP5 to be better. Special shout out to the Vice Pro, which I thought was absolutely brilliant, and also the Mizuno RB Tour. But out of all of those, just edging it, the TaylorMade TP5. We are onto the biggest surprise of the year, and I really wasn't expecting this. Surprise, mother- I actually believe this company has really turned a corner in the last 12 months and is producing some fantastic golf balls, this one included. The Wilson Staff Model. So this is a four-piece construction golf ball, and it's what I'd call an all-in-one. So quite a few of the brands have a family of golf balls, like the Pro V, for example, sits alongside the Pro VX, and the AVX, while the staff model is an all-in-one. We believe this is the best golf ball for us, so we're only gonna give you one model. And I actually really like that. It simplifies everything. You can get an R version of this golf ball, which has a raw cover. Not a massive fan of that, but the normal one looks very premium. It's got a really clean alignment aid on here for putts, and it does everything 
really well. Out on the golf course, it had a lovely feeling to it, but also the data, it stacks up against everything within this test, not only on the shorter shots, but on the drives as well. And one of the huge advantages, if you're watching this video, thinking about what golf balls you're gonna be buying, it comes in cheaper than pretty much everything on this test. Ooh, that's good. It's just a great golf ball that contends with absolutely everything else I've tested. So Wilson, staff model. So for the best newcomer into this category, be in absolutely no doubt that the golf ball market is huge. You see, pretty much all manufacturers make golf clubs, but the profit margins there are relatively small. The golf ball, however, is a hugely profitable enterprise if you can get it set up correctly, because that is the real cost of getting a golf ball to market. The entire manufacturing process can take a lot of expense to set up. And because there's so many patents flying around, getting sued is a real possibility. So if a new company was gonna enter the market, they need funding, they need deep pockets, and they probably need some good lawyers. So welcome to the party, PXG. So if you've watched any of my videos from this year reviewing the PXG gear, they've gone massively up in my estimations. They've moved away from being very expensive, a little bit gimmicky to a decent price and actually performing really well. The Golf Ball is slightly controversial and it has received mixed reviews throughout the year, but to be honest, I really like it. I'm not gonna say it's the best golf ball ever produced and that it destroys the competition, but it really does hold its own. I actually felt on the golf course, this was really good, almost slightly better than potentially the data when stacked up against some of the other balls. My only concern was it just seemed to get marked up quite easily. But there can be no doubt as an opening gambit into the premium golf ball market, I think this is a really good choice. It's also similar to the Wilson that it's their only offering in this premium section. So it's an all in one. -er. So now onto the category, which is best in distance. To be honest, I'm not gonna pretend that this is a category that I would recommend for everybody. Distance is a finely balanced thing. The harder that you hit the golf ball, the more that you will make it spin. But if you wanna hit the ball further, just getting a harder golf ball is often not the answer. It comes down to how you launch the ball, your spin rates, your angles of attack. It comes down to so many things. This data set and my decision is purely based on the information that I have and what I found on the golf course. So coming out on top is the Vice Pro Plus. Now this was a very, very close run thing between the Vice, the Chromesoft XLS and the Mizuno RB Tour X. All these balls are very much designed to be low spinning when struck with the driver. Then the Pro Plus just edged the other two out, but we're talking by a few yards. I was obviously hitting these golf balls throughout the year with my own driver, but I also completed a test here in the studio using a Callaway Paradigm driver at 112, 113 miles an hour, just to see how these reacted with different swing speeds. And as mentioned, these were all incredibly close. One of the reasons that I've plumped for the Vice Pro over say the Chromesoft X LS is that this feels like a bit of a rock when you hit it. Whilst the Vice Pro Plus actually feels a little bit more responsive and a little bit better around the green, which I know isn't the whole point of this, but it's nice to have a more rounded model. And stay tuned because this is gonna go into the contest for the best golf ball overall. Now, as mentioned, it's very hard to break into this premium golf ball space. Like Titleist, for many years, had an absolute lock on the market. TaylorMade has started to make some moves. Shrixen, obviously, Callaway. It started to become a little bit more congested. But this company now has a seat at the high table. I'm not gonna say it's a big seat. It's kind of like a really sturdy stool next to the other thrones. And it has become apparent that a lot of golfers, a lot of the common man, are rebelling against the status quo and they're looking for different options in this market. And sitting at this table now, very much firmly in place, are Vice and the Vice Pro and the Vice Pro Plus. So Vice have really stepped up and they're thinking about their own 
coronation. The other monarchs should be worried. The Vice Pro is the softer version of these two golf balls and it does spin a lot. For me, the Pro Plus is a more complete product. And the data numbers on these golf balls, again, net out really well. They're also direct to consumer, so you can actually go on the website and you can buy in bulk, which drives the price down similar to what the Wilson would be. And any option that you can get to do that is usually pretty good. The Vice Pro Plus in particular for me, just, it seems to fly very heavy through the air. Like if there's a bit of wind whipping around, it just seems to be able to batter through it. And that is very useful if you're playing Lynx Golf. Definitely a contender. So we come to the best golf ball series. Now, as mentioned, quite a few of these brands have a number of premium golf balls at the top of the line. Bridgestone, for example, have a very complex line. Titleist, we've already spoken about. Mizuno have only got those two balls, but everyone seems to be going for this approach apart from a couple of contenders on this test. And for me, the most complete selection within this category is Callaway with their Chrome Soft range. Now, a few things to say. I think they're the best range because they offer the most difference between the balls. The Chrome Soft is just that, it's soft. The Chrome Soft X is a little bit firmer, it flies a little bit further, and the Chrome Soft X LS is a very low spinning golf ball. When I hit these one after the other on the golf course and measuring the data, I can really tell a difference between them. Sometimes with the brands, they just get a little bit mixed up, which is why I do like the Wilson and the PXG. You know, it's, it's very clear. Here is the one golf ball. The Callaway have managed to get three very different performing golf balls. I would say, however, the Chrome Soft XLS feels very firm. The Chrome Soft overall actually performed probably the worst out of every ball on this test the Chrome Soft X I do like. So even though there are issues here, there are very clear distinctions between these three golf balls. So onto the best overall golf ball and the one which is gonna be finding its way into my golf bag. Now to reach this overall decision, I've obviously taken the performance of these golf balls across the year on the golf course and the testing that we've done. How they look, how they feel and how they perform. But here at the end, at the finale, we have five golf balls fighting out for a chance in the bag. We have the Bridgestone Tor B XS, basically Tiger's golf ball. Didn't top any of the charts, but it was always up near the top, a very consistent golf ball. The Vice Pro Plus, as you already know, it's a favorite of mine. The TaylorMade TP5, a very spinny golf ball, that actually held its own on the longer shots as well. The Titleist Pro V1, which it's the Pro V1. And finally, rounding out the finalists, making one hell of a debut, the Wilson Staff Model. And we are here for the final test, which is gonna be a very simple, long drive. However, there are a few caveats. So let's say within this long drive, just for an example, I absolutely smashed the Pro V and it's flying further than everything else. If it's only flying a little bit further than say the Bridgestone, but the Bridgestone is offering more help overall across every single shot, then we'll go for the Bridgestone. But which one is gonna stand up to a good smashing? Now, <laughs> looking at the data here for my full swing speed, something which jumps out and something which is incredibly apparent is just how similar everything is. So we'll throw them up here, but Pro V kind of ball speed here, 166, Wilson 166, Bridgestone 165, Vice 168, TaylorMade 167, they're all so similar, spin rates exactly the same in the same order, 2130, 2063, 2011, 2190, 2165, carry distances, 299, 296, 294, 294, 301. Like the maximum difference here is six yards. This is something which actually I found quite surprising. There was a definite difference with the really firm golf balls. So with the Chromesoft XLS, for example, 
the Bizuno actually to some extent. The, the balls that were designed to be very, very firm, I did see a little bit more carry and a little bit more distance in preliminary testing. But overall, the five balls that made it through to the final, they're so similar. They're so, so similar. So after all that and across the whole year, it has come down to two golf balls. I'm taking away the Bridgestone. I'm taking away the Vice Pro Plus, which kind of breaks my heart a little bit. And I'm taking away the Titleist Pro V1. So the Wilson stacked up incredibly well against the TP5 in pretty much every category. And I do have to say that really all these golf balls I tested, certainly the final five, they're all fantastic. But this is all about now what I think would be the best within my golf bag. And of course, the one that I would recommend overall. It's honestly coming down to just the intangibles, like the feel, the memories that some of them have given me, how they line up on the green, any visual tech that I can add, and which one I'm gonna be the most happy with over a full year of competition golf. <sighs> which one?